Good evening and God bless you and welcome to our Sunday morning celebration service. We're so glad that you could be part of the service this morning. We trust that you will be blessed even as you continue to stay connected this morning. Um, you could like and share, comment. Uh, you could share this post. Be a blessing to somebody, you know, somebody that needs breakthrough, somebody needs a miracle, or somebody needs a divine intervention. You can feel free to share this post so that you could be a blessing to somebody. Join us this morning as we lift up and exalt the name of our God. We trust in God for great and mighty things to take place in our midst this morning and also right there in your homes. May the Lord richly bless you. We praise your name, Jesus. You are worthy, God. Oh, 
For the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price. You've paid Bearing all my sin and shame In love you came And gave amazing grace Thank you for this love Thank you for the nail pierced. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace.
is our God. Sing with me, sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see, and all will see how great, how great, how great. God to 
Pray your blessings upon our service in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you and your family, and we thank God for every one of you watching us online from all over the world. We greet our congregation, Bethesda Worship Center, and say God's blessings be upon every family, together with all those watching on the Supernatural Fire online platform throughout the nations. Today I pray that as you will join us for our Sunday morning service, that God will begin to minister to you and deposit something supernatural in your spirit. I want to start by saying that I'm still on the topic of Romans 8.31, and we are understanding, uh, I'm going to begin to combine harvest in my sermons with Romans 8.21, where we are examining ourselves, we are discerning, we are growing, we are finding the word, we are allowing the word to shape us, to mold us, to transform us. We are coming to the place to know that God is for us in 2022. Irrespective of what is happening, God is for us in 2022. So today I want to say that every one of you must know that if no one is supporting you, God is supporting you. So we need to understand that Romans 12, 1 says that we need to make decisive dedication of our bodies, presenting all our members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to the Lord, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Now, we must understand that the kingdom has objectives, and we need to have God in our view in order for us to establish the kingdom of God on the earth. You see, we must be determined to commit ourselves to righteousness and to serving God. That means we must be determined to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and we have this responsibility so that all things can be added. Now, self-denial must be on the agenda of 2022. That, Lord, we are denying ourselves and we are sacrificing to present ourselves holy and pleasing unto you. Now, 
In Romans 12, 2, it goes deeper and tells us, don't be conformed to the world. That means the world has customs, the world has ideologies, the world has thought patterns, but the believer is operating with a renewed mindset, a mindset that is in, in understanding the work of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So we need to have a mindset that will give us supernatural victory as we go through life's journey. Now, having a mindset that, may, that is renewed means that I must see the Word for what God wants, wants me to see. I must see with the eyes of my understanding, which my spiritual eyes must be open to the dimension of truth. Now, in Romans 8, 6, uh, we find that the Bible says, uh, it talks about two minds. And in the world, there'll be two minds. There's a mind of the spirit and the mind of the flesh. Now, the, the secret of your success in 2022 and reaping the harvest is going to be how you think. Because now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason, Without the Holy Spirit is death. Without the Holy Spirit is death. Death that comprises of all miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. Now, the Bible says, but the mind of the Holy Spirit is life, soul, peace, both now and forever. So when the Lord speaks about the two types of mentalities, he talks about the believers within the body of Christ that can be here but are in the process of growth. Now, we need to understand that when you talk about the carnal mind, it means that people can start in truth and end in carnality because the consequences of carnal thinking is death. What, I'm, what do I mean by this? Is that the word carnal in the Greek means flesh, which is in reference to sinful nature that we inherited, and anyone can become a victim of carnal thinking. You see, we need to be in a place of discernment that if I'm going to walk in the supernatural, if I'm going to activate the power of God, if I'm going to do things in the kingdom of God that will affect the kingdom of God and be relevant to what God's plan is, then I have to understand I must not drift from spiritual thinking. Now, spiritual thinking is not carnal thinking because what God is saying in this word, he says, listen, now the mind of the flesh is, is sense and reason. Now, there are many believers in the body of Christ that still operate with sense and reason. And I tell you something, what God is saying, you can't get peace because it says the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and peace, both now and forevermore. Now, if you want the Prince of Peace and you want peace in your life, imagine if you're thinking carnally, you can never get peace in your life. You can try everything, but all carnal thinkers they will never have the true peace of God. Now, so if you want peace in your life, you have to understand as a Christian that salvation and receiving Christ in your life is nothing that we have to do to receive salvation except confess with our mouth and believe in our heart and we are saved. We are washed in the blood. So it's like when, you, when God has already blessed you and you think in the flesh with reason, what you are doing is you are really suppressing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, many believers are really not interested in submitting to the Word. They are interested in just getting everything from God without submitting to the Word. So, there are different types of believers. Some people go to church only for what they can get from God. Others go to church to say, Lord, what can I do for your kingdom? What can I do for you? So, you must understand that the carnal mind is death. That means if a person that is a believer in the church thinking with a carnal mind, God can't go back on his word. That's why he says you can only reap what you sow. If you sow corn, you're going to reap corn. If you sow carrots, you're going to reap carrots. So the harvest we choose to reap is in our hands. So church, this year there's a harvest that is going to come. As I said, this is not the, the it is the start of the harvest. And it will run on. So in this year, the harvest will start. That means God is starting a supernatural shift from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And a transformation in many hearts to the kingdom of light. But what we need to understand is that we cannot reap anything if we think fleshly. Because all the your reason and human reason will do, it will kill what God has in store for you. Now, when you think about 
certain things in the Bible that requires a spiritual mind. Now, I, I, I can imagine Isaiah the prophet. He, he goes around saying, and this is what he says. He says, a virgin shall bring forth a child, Emmanuel. Now, if you think about the statement that I, I would never want to be in Elijah, uh, Isaiah's shoes because you can't go around saying a virgin shall give birth to a son. It's not possible even now or whenever unless the Holy Spirit tells you. Now, to the human carnal mind, people will say, Isaiah the prophet is crazy. Why? He is saying something that has never been done before in the earth. A virgin shall bring forth a child and his name shall be Emmanuel, who will be the son of God. Now, I want to say to you that you have to understand when the Holy Spirit directs you, you may not make sense of what is happening, but surely you will activate another realm. So, it, as believers in this world, we need to come out of carnality if we're going to start reaping the harvest. We have to come out of flesh thinking to start reaping the harvest. Now, one of the things that John says, and 1 John 2, 15 and 16, he gives a direct command to the believer. He says, listen, do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. Now, most believers love everything in the world, but they're not loving everything in the spirit realm. Why? Because everything you can see on the earth is what you think can make you happy. And God is saying, listen, if anyone loves the world, now, if I was standing in the office of a prophet, in this book it is saying this. I want you to get this word. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see, we say we have the love of the Father, we have the love of Christ in us, but we love the world more than we love God. You must understand. Then, then he goes on to say, and I declare this prophetically to you today, that you are coming out of carnality, but you must understand what it is going to take to reap the supernatural harvest. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, craving for sensual gratification. And the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind. And the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are of the world itself. Now, when you take into consideration, what are we living for? Are you living for the things of the world? Are you living for God? Are you thinking about evangelism, soul winning, about saving souls, about growing in Christ, the word of God? What do you live for? You see, here he exposes something. He says, carnality is rooted in lust, a desire for something not in the will of God. Now, Adam and Eve opened doors because they allowed their minds to be deceived by satanic influence. Now, I'm teaching you how to reap the harvest. Now, to reap the harvest, I cannot be under the influence of the enemy or Satan. I have to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You see, many of us want the blessings more than we want God. Now, I believe that God wants to bless his people in 2022. There's a supernatural financial harvest coming. But I need to also show you some things that will hinder and cause thorns and thistles to grow and, and, and hinder some of the things that God has planned for you. Now, in this, we find that here you find a threefold cord, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. A threefold cord. Now, when you think about the spirit life, where God said that he who is controlled by the Holy, Holy Spirit will have peace and he will have life. Now, to have peace now and forever, and to have life now and forever, it means that I must give myself to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, you find there, the devil has a threefold cord, which is, as I said just now, the spirit of lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And in Luke 4, when Jesus came to the earth, he defeated the three spirits. In the same way, we understand there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is the threefold God, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is threefold. So we understand that the enemy counterfeits by demonic influences. Now, when the children of God think in the flesh, we sow the wrong seed. Now, we must begin to change our thinking. Galatians 5, 16 to 18 says something very important. It says, but I say to you today, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. 
responsive and controlled and guided by the Spirit. You see, this year, make it the year of seeking God's face. Make it the year that I will not only walk but live habitually in the Holy Spirit. I will allow myself to be responsive to the utterances and also to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Now, you must understand that you can be controlled by, the, by your mind of the flesh or you can be controlled by the mind of the Spirit. Now, your thoughts will determine what seeds you sow. If you want to reap a harvest, then I must think like Jesus and have the mind of Christ. So if we are guided by the Holy Spirit and we are controlled by Him, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of the human nature without God. Today, let me say, the church lives in many places, maybe not here or maybe not in your church, to gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh. That means there are many churches today in existence just to please people and not to please God. Church, you have a responsibility that I will please God every time I come into his presence or whether I leave the church, my lifestyle must be to please God. You see, for the desires of the flesh, as it says in verse 17, it is opposed to the Holy Spirit. Now, how can we be led by the Holy Spirit when we are living in the flesh? Because the flesh will take you places where the Holy Spirit is not comfortable. The flesh will lead you to places where the Holy Spirit cannot even speak to you. Because once you get in the flesh, the flesh opposes the Spirit. So if you want to rise in the Holy Spirit and have a greater anointing, then you must sow to the anointing. You must sow to the Spirit. Well, the believers went in the upper room. Those that were praying in the upper room, 120 believers, they were sowing in the Spirit. And while they were sowing in the Spirit, they began to reap the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God into them. Now, we who want to sow in the Spirit must be able to stay focused and stay on the Word of God. Now, the Bible says here that the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh, Godless human nature. For these are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding and in conflict with each other so that you are not free but prevented from doing what you desire. You see, you have to come out of the flesh thinking. That means you can be in church but you think carnal. So that's why you find there will always be a conflict within yourself to get to the next level. But the Bible says in verse 18, but you, if you are guided and led by the Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. So I'm saying to you today, church, that you need to be guided. You need to be led. So that means my direction for 2022 in reaping the harvest has to come from the Holy Spirit. He's going to open doors. He's going to give you opportunities. He's going to give you favor and promotion. He's going to give you the divine ability of God. Now, one of the things or aspects that I want to touch on, there's a few aspects on what is carnal thinking. Now, in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, there's an example of carnal thinking and why so many, they ask me, Pastor, why can't I get the breakthrough? Now, if you want to be led by the Spirit and you want yourself to see yourself rising and, and being controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit and this year receiving the anointing that God has already designed for you, then you have to follow what God is saying in His Word. For in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, it says, there's a few points. For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them and letting them go, and giving up resentment, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. It goes on to say, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them and letting them go, and giving up resentment, neither will your Father forgive your trespass. Now, you see, this is an example of carnal thinking. Because you could be in church, but one of the greatest bondages to the supernatural harvest is unforgiveness. You know, you want to reap, but you don't want to forgive. You see, worldly people, they want revenge. There are a lot of people who want revenge. These are worldly people. But I pray today that every member of, or that is watching today, wherever you may be watching from, the moment you release somebody and forgive them, and the moment you don't want revenge anymore, then God can control you and lead you by the Spirit. This spirit of unforgiveness, somebody has did something to you and it was bad they, because of their kind of behavior and you could not forgive them. But the kingdom of God operates with forgiveness. You see, even if you are offended, you have to let go quickly. Otherwise, the Bible says that if you don't forgive them, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. Now, this is a very simple truth. But many people hold grudges. 
against other people. They have family grudges. They speak about people's past. They focus on their past when God has forgiven them. But what God is saying here is that even if there was reckless and willful sins, you must let them go. When you keep people in bondage by gossiping, backbiting, and, and, and talking about all different things and whatever they did to you and what you supposed to do to them, and you keep it in your heart, the, the revenge, what will happen is you cannot operate in the supernatural. You will always be hindered by your carnal behavior. You cannot get what God has for you because even God is saying to you today that he is the father in heaven. He says, you know what? How are you expecting me to forgive your trespasses if you are holding things against people? So the first thing in carnality is you hold things against people. But if you're controlled by the Holy Spirit, you let it go. In John 4, 20, let's look at hatred. The Bible says, if anyone says, I love God, and hates, detests, and abominates his brother in Christ, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he can see, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. Now I want to say to you today, these two points are, 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 are enemy portals to attack people. Why? Hatred. The Bible says, if you hate people in the church or within the kingdom or you're hating people, the Bible says, no matter how much you say you love God, the Bible says, you are a liar. So today I want you to let go of all those that you hate. Anybody that you hate, let it go. For what the Lord is saying today, the moment you let go, then the love of God can dwell in you. You see, if the love of God dwells in you, you will forgive and forget easily. Now, I'll just give you two examples of the flesh. Why? Because sometimes people hate other people for continuously without forgiveness. And what happens is it becomes an hindrance. Have you had a past relationship that you cannot forgive? Did you have a, a, a problems with somebody that you cannot forgive? Are you at work and you, and you just hate people at work? When you are a child of God, you must understand that you have to display and manifest the love of God. No matter who does what to you, you must learn to love them and forgive them and reach out to them. No matter what is happening. So you, you understand that these are things that hinder believers from the next dimension. Now, the Bible says in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, uh, it speaks about the practices of the flesh, which everybody must rehearse all the time to keep this in your mind to understand what God is saying. Now, the doings and the practices of the flesh are clear. They are obvious. They are immorality, immorality impurity, indecency, idolatry, what idols in our hearts, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill temper, selfishness, divisions, party spirits, and all of these things, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. He says, I warn you beforehand, this is prophetic from the Lord, just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now imagine Christ has given us the kingdom of God. We should be walking with the kingdom rights, and we are the ones that inherit the kingdom of God. And that's why I want to say today, many of us cannot inherit the kingdom of God fully. Why? Because we are holding on to the practices of the flesh, though we are saved. We are now in the kingdom, but we hold on to the practices of the flesh. And then we're asking God, why can't I reap my harvest? You see, church, today, in the name of Jesus, we dethrone immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, every demonic power, any spirit of selfishness, envy, drunkenness, whatever it may be that is coming against us so that we will inherit the kingdom of God. I declare today that as we change our thinking, as we come to a renewed mindset, we are going to inherit the kingdom of God and 2022 will be the year of the harvest. Now in Galatians 5, 22 to 26, the Bible says, it talks about those led by the Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. I love this. The work which His presence within accomplishes. Where is His presence? Is the work which His presence within you accomplishes. Is love, is joy, is peace, is patience, even temper, and, and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, and faithfulness. Look at this. It goes on. But I want to just say this, that if you want to reap love, 
You got to sow love. That's what the Bible is saying. If you want to reap joy, then you got to sow joy. You got to you got to sow to peace. That means you got to be sow to patience. You got to sow to kindness, goodness, and and faithfulness. How do I sow? Because the moment I allow myself to be controlled by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God in me, I am able to manifest all of these things. You see, you can't accomplish as verse twenty three say gentleness and meekness and humility in your home if you're operating with pride. You see why there's no peace in the house? It's because there's too much of pride. Maybe self-control, self-restraint, you will accomplish when you're under the control of the Holy Spirit. Against such things, there's no law that can bring charge. And those who belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh. That means the godless human nature with its passions, appetites, and desires. You know, when you belong to Christ, you have crucified the flesh. Jesus came to take away sin, not to make believers try to live in sin because of the blood. We live in sin and say, listen, I want to say this. There's no condemnation to anybody. Through the blood of Jesus, grace is there. If you repent, God forgives. But what am I saying? That if we live, in Luke 25, if we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us walk in the Spirit. Let us live by the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit, we have our life in God, let us go forward, walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. You see, what we are saying, to any sinner that is watching me, to anybody that is not perfect, we are not perfect, we, we, we only reach perfection when we're with Christ. But what we are saying is that, be convicted when the flesh is ruling. Be transformed in your thinking. You see, if, you, if you're not transformed, if you think, listen, I can live as I want to live and I don't need to worry because I, I'm, I'm already saved. Imagine how much the enemy will oppress you and keep you under his, his control and also not give you the full authority Christ has for you. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to take over, the Holy Spirit is the one that if he lives in you, he will walk with you, he will talk with you, he will help you and give you your victory. Now, the Bible says that we need to be controlled by the Spirit of God. We need to understand that the Spirit of God is when we sow to the Spirit, we will reap from the Spirit. Now I'm going down to Romans 6, 16 to 17. And I want you to understand this, that every child of God, we have this responsibility to serve the Lord. Now it says, do you not know that if you continually surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Right doing and right standing with God. I like that word. Is that the word there is saying, if we, the obedience. Now, I'm going to show you something about obedience concerning the financial harvest. But thank God, though you were once slaves to sin, you have now become obedient in all your heart to, to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed and to which you were committed. What God is saying is this. We have now become obedient in our hearts to the standard of teaching and the instructions which God has given us. What has happened is that obedience which leads to righteousness, but slaves of sin which leads to death. Many people's harvests cannot manifest because we are slaves to sin. You see, if we allow ourselves to be controlled by sin and sin to take over, you will always be enslaved by those principalities and powers that want to keep you in bondage. You can say, I'm a Christian, but you know you're enslaved. Why? Because the enemy wants to keep you in bondage. You see, sometimes the, the, when you obey, you don't even have to do anything. The miracles will happen. Why? Because obedience does supernatural things in our lives when we obey the word. So God is saying, listen, let's change our standard of teaching. Let's change our standard of instruction. Let's get the revelation. Because Jesus came to take away sin. He came to take it away. What is he doing in your body if you are habitually, intentionally living in sin and rejecting the voice of the Holy Spirit? 
You have to think about it. You see, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We will never be perfect on the earth. But we need to make sure that we are obeying the word and not sin. So this is a sermon for you. If you sow in sin, you reap the wrong harvest. If you sow in the spirit, you reap the harvest of the spirit. And that is what the Lord is saying to us today, that you must be controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, we find in the Bible, we have a few minutes, in Luke 18, 18 to 25, there was a, 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 a certain ruler that came to Jesus. And this is what he asked Jesus, Luke 18, 18 to 25. The certain ruler asked him, good teacher, you are essentially and perfectly morally good. What shall I do to inherit eternal life or to partake of eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom? So it's a very good question. Every child of God will ask this question. What should I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, then you know what Jesus does? He goes to check the attitude of the heart. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me essentially and perfectly morally good? No one is essentially and perfectly morally good except God only. And then he goes on to say, he says, you know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not uh, bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. And he replied, all these things I've kept from my youth. So this young man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I keep all these commandments. But Jesus heard it. He said to him, one thing you lack. You see, when Jesus said, one thing you lack, and, and he was shocked. He said, I do all of these things. But he said, one thing you lack. You know, it's amazing that if you really want God to work in your life, you must ask the Lord today, what do I lack? You know, as a leader, I must ask the Lord, what am I lacking? Because I don't want to be disqualified from, from whatever the harvest has to manifest in 2022. So I must introspect myself and every one of us must say, Lord, where are we lacking? Because you already blessed me. You already anointed me. You already gave me favor. You put everything upon it. But Lord, where am I lacking? You see, everyone must ask the question, where are we lacking that we are not walking in the fullness of what God intended for us? If you feel the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today, you need to ask this question. Because here, this young man had a problem. Look at what Jesus told him. Sell everything that you have and divide the money amongst the poor. And you will have rich treasure in heaven. And come back and follow me he said, become my disciple, join my party and accompany me. You see, but when he heard this, he became distressed and very sorrowful. For he was rich, exceedingly so. And Jesus observing him said, how difficult is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom. Now, he's not talking about those who have wealth and are serving God. He's talking about those who made wealth the idol. There are many people that have made wealth the idol. And so here you find that it's everything is about, about the wealth. And so Jesus looked at this man and said, listen, you must look for treasure in heaven. You see, when you are controlled by the Holy Spirit, you realize the true treasure is, is in heaven. The true treasure is Jesus Christ. And so he said, he said to him, come and become my disciple. Look at the, the, the place of honor within the kingdom. Come and become my disciple. Imagine that. Come and follow me. Be part of my team. Jesus is calling many people today to become part of his team. But you know what people are saying? No, I'm too busy working. I'm too busy making money. I'm too busy trying to see how I can build an empire. But what they're failing to understand, Jesus told this man, I want your heart. I, I, I don't want, he, he didn't say, him, take everything and give it to the church or give it to me. Jesus never said that. Jesus said, give it to the poor. And then he said to him something. He said, listen, I want you to follow me. Now, you realize something. In this case, Jesus was telling him to give it to the, the He had a reason. Because he wanted to make sure this man's heart was in the right place. And so this man said, he became distressed and sorrowful. You see, when truth is preached and you become distressed and sorrowful, then there's something wrong. Because many people like to hear, hey, Jesus, you're going to bless me, and Jesus, you're going to do this for me, and, and this is going to happen good, and that's going to... Yes, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but there are principles of the kingdom. Are you obeying the word of God? Are you listening to the voice of God? Are you in the plan of God? Is your heart in God's hands? If your heart is not in the right place, you can try everything in your own sin and everything will amount to nothing if it is not in the will of God. Can I say that again? Imagine you're working hard. You're not sleeping at night. You're trying everything in your own power. And then you come to the end of the race. Jesus said, that was not even my plan for you. You got warfare because of, as I said, carnality is reasoning in your mind. You reasoned, you read all those things, you ruined your life. 
Let me tell you something. The prize is eternal life. The prize is our, our eternal life in the kingdom of God. And so this man didn't understand that. And so we find that he lost everything he never was on Jesus' team. He didn't become a disciple. There were no instructions from the word. There was no commitment. There was no dedication. And Christ is looking for people in this generation that will love God first. And I believe in people prospering. Don't get me wrong. And I'm telling you, your prosperity starts when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so everything else can be added unto you. Today, may you open up your heart Examine yourself and say, Lord, I am preparing to be controlled fully by the Holy Spirit, to be guided, to be led. Let him guide you in your plans. Let him lead you in what you need to do for 2022. There's a harvest coming, but we need to be in the plan and the will of God for the harvest to manifest in our lives. That's why here was a young man. He was so unhappy. He was so sad. Why? Because it is difficult to give our heart and everything that we have to Christ. If we are led by the Spirit of God, give him your all. Let nothing be withheld from the Master. Let nothing, let yourself become a living sacrifice. Open yourself to God. Don't think that God cannot do it for you, that anything will be impossible, because all things are possible with God. God bless you today as you take this word and let the word change you. And you don't try to change the word. Let whatever you sow, you shall reap. And so this year, make it the year I'm going to sow, Father. Yes, I'm going to sow financial seeds. I'm going to sow in the spirit. I'm going to sow by being controlled by you. I'm going to sow in prayer. I'm going to sow in relationships. I'm going to sow, Father, in whatever way I can sow, Lord, because if I want to reap a life of peace and happiness and joy and gentleness and humility and all of that, I have to have the Holy Spirit in my life. If I have the Holy Spirit in my life, if I'm controlled by the Spirit of God, then I can experience peace. But with a carnal mind, you are, so many believers are asking me, why can't I get peace in my life? You know why you can't get peace? Because if you operate in the flesh, your household will be upside down, right side up, and you're thinking, why? Because any household that operates in the flesh, there will be no peace in that house. But when you are controlled by the Holy Spirit, when you allow the word to change you, to change your thinking, to change the household, you operate in love, you don't hate, and you're able to forgive easily, and you're able to come in repentance before the Lord, God can perform the supernatural in your life. God bless you as you take this word and let this word transform your thinking that you may walk and live in the supernatural harvest of 2022. God bless you.